Okay, today we're gonna start with uh, a new topic. Okay, topic number five in your uh, syllabus or chapter six in the uh, textbook in the Lean et al textbook. It will be topic number six. Okay, so uh, last week we have covered on the discrete probability distribution. Okay, and beginning from topic five onwards. We're gonna uh, learn on the topics under continuous probability distribution. So topic number five is basically the introduction to continuous probability distributions. The remaining of the syllabus okay, will be connected to this concept and also uh, understanding the uh, application of continuous probability distribution. So if you recall from the previous topic on discrete, okay, we covered binomial and also Poisson uh, probability distribution, whereby the events that uh, are associated with binomial and Poisson basically are events that can be uh, counted on the exact numbers one, two, three, how many days, okay, how many flights are cancelled, how many uh, days or how many cars on the road. So those are the events that fall under discrete. Okay? So the, the event that associated with the probability distribution will take only uh, exact numbers. But as what you learned previously in the beginning of the semester on uh, discrete variable and continuous variable. So continuous can take uh, decimal places, okay? And the value can, uh, can assume 0 0.1, 0 0.2. So the event can can be in decimal places, unlike discrete, and they can only take exact numbers. So when you when we learn on the normal distribution uh, or continuous distribution, the first part is to introduce uh, to you all on the on the topic of normal distribution. So also in the uh, chapter number two. You learn on the skewness, okay, positive skewness distribution, uh, negative skewness, and also zero skewness. Okay, zero skewness is when the mode mean and median are uh, both uh, three of these values fall in the middle of the distribution. Okay, so and as I mentioned before, it is also known as the normal distribution. Normal means okay, typical. Okay, uh, so if you say how are you feeling today, I say you say that I'm normal. So basically, it's just a standard day. Okay, so there's nothing, uh, nothing, nothing significant happening on that day. So you call it a normal day. So when it comes to normal distribution, uh, why is it called normal distribution? Because when you plot the shape of the distribution, it is the typical standard uh, distribution for any uh, common uh, population, meaning that you get a bell-shaped distribution whereby the mean, the mode, and the median will be somewhere in the middle of the distribution. So that is a normal. Okay. Other than that, we, do, we, we don't call it a normal, we call it, uh, I mean, uh, we call it linear, non-linear or non-normal distribution. Okay, so if the mean, mode, and uh, median are not in the middle of the distribution, then it is not called a normal distribution. So, and at the end of the day, when you learn about this uh, probability distribution, okay, this normal distribution, uh, the main agenda is to be able to determine what is the probability that fall within a certain range in the, yeah, under the distribution. Okay, what is the probability of X more than, probability of X less than. Okay, so this is important, uh, not just in this, uh, not just because you are learning statistics, but in the empirical world, okay, when you are doing research, okay, you, you, are, uh, you need to know how to interpret okay, on, and how to calculate the relevant probability values okay, uh, that, that, yeah, that are associated with certain events so that you can make up a decision, you can determine what is the best guideline based on the probabilities okay, of the event uh, occurring. Okay? So, just like now we are living under this COVID-19 pandemic. So there are many statistics or, or guidelines or measures okay, that the ministry, that the scientists use to determine what is the probability that 
uh, if the virus spread okay, more than certain percentage, then we need to have another lockdown, another PKP and whatnot. Okay, so uh, that is the idea of calculating the probability. Okay, given that if uh, we assume that the the distribution of the population is a normal distribution. Okay, so the characteristics. Uh, as I mentioned before, it is bell shape, okay, whereby the mean, the mode, and the median are located in the middle of the distribution. Okay? Bell shape, we, we look at the uh, concept of bell shape distribution earlier in the chapter. Symmetrical means uh, the area on the left uh, is equivalent to the area on the right, okay. Uh, asymptotic, okay, means that when you plot the curve, the the exists the uh, the lines of the curve on the left and the right will not touch the x axis so it just go to infinity okay so this is the component uh, the item which i mentioned just now the mode mean and median uh, they are all located in the middle okay for a positively skewed if you recall okay the mean is located on the right the negatively skewed distribution the mean is located on the left okay so those are not not non normal distribution but normal distribution or zero skewness distribution uh, when is when these three values are equal and the total probability value will always equals to one so the total area under the curve re refers to the uh, the total probability value so when you calculate the event uh, of x more than or less than okay and when you take into account the whole value it always equals to one okay so the area of the left equals to the right which is 0 0.5 so point number six is referring uh, is uh, referring to point number two it's symmetrical means when you cut the graph into half okay half will equal to 0 0.5 the other half also will equal to 0 0.5 so okay so a typical uh, normal distribution or zero skewness distribution okay, it will look like a bell shape okay whereby the the middle line okay equals to the uh, uh, pointing to the value of mean, mode, and median. And the right tail and also the left tail, okay, never cuts the x axis, uh, which is what we call asymptotic. Okay, it just go on and on. Uh, it never cross the x axis. Okay, so asymmetrical means the area on the, okay, the area on the left here, okay, uh, which is equal to 0 0.5, will, will also be equal to the, uh, area on the right, okay, which is also equal to 0 0.5. Okay, so this area 0 0.5, this area 0 0.5. So when you add uh, both areas, it should be equal to 1.0. Okay, so we never exceed uh, exceed one. So that is the general shape or characteristics of a normal distribution. Okay, and from this slide, it's just to show you. Uh, Given a smaller value of standard deviation, okay, the shape of the normal distribution becomes more steeper, okay, let me uh, okay, compared to when the standard deviation is uh, bigger, okay, the the normal distribution becomes more flatter, okay, because this, as what we learned before, standard deviation is a measure of dispersion. The bigger the standard deviation, the more dispersed uh, is your distribution meaning that the value can go uh, further away to the left and further away to the right okay but if the standard deviation is small meaning that most of your data are located around the same value okay? it is clustered or concentrated around the same numbers so that's why the shape of the distribution the one in red is very uh, okay it's, it's it's not as wide okay it's very smaller in the in the, in the size okay, of the distribution okay so you can you can see the application of or the, the concept of standard deviation okay, as a measure of dispersion. The bigger the value is, the flatter the normal curve becomes. Okay, and also here, uh, different means and standard deviation. So you can see also uh, uh, the bigger the standard deviation, okay, the flatter the, uh, the distribution looks like, okay, compared to a smaller. Uh, smaller sigma okay, or standard deviation here you can see that the mean uh, is different but the one that actually is uh, causing the shape of the distribution to differ whether it becomes flatter 
for more stable okay is based on the value of the standard deviation okay okay and here you can see that when the sigma are equal regardless the value of the mean the shape will be equal okay as what we learned before okay uh, the shape of the distribution differs according to the sigma so although the mean is different okay you can see that mu 20, 283 uh, 301 321 but the shape of the distribution are equally the are all the same because the sigma is equal across three different uh, distributions okay so and the characteristics of a normal distribution when you calculate the mean the mean will uh, we call okay whenever you call a normal or you refer to a normal distribution we call it is also known as the z distribution Okay, another name or term that we refer to a normal distribution is uh, a, is also called the Z distribution. So whenever you calculate the Z, uh, you refer to a normal or Z distribution. The mean, okay, of a normal distribution will be zero and the sigma will be one. Okay, so this is a standard characteristics of a normal distribution or Z distribution. Okay, so what is Z value? Okay, so we call a normal distribution as a Z distribution. So a Z value is a sign distance between the selected value of uh, designated X and the population mean mu. We, we, we refer just now uh, when uh, the Z distribution has a mean of zero and sigma equals to one. Okay, so how do you calculate Z value? It's basically the difference between the event X. Okay, so if you recall from the binomial and the Poisson distribution, when you want to calculate px more than three, okay, px more than two would be uh, the probability of x less than one. Okay, so it is the same as x. You know, x is the event, okay, or the 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 event that you want to calculate the probability. Okay, it's basically z is obtained by the difference between uh, even x and the mean value of the distribution. Okay, and divide by the Standard deviation, okay? not variance, but standard deviation. Okay, because this is sigma, not sigma squared. Okay, if you recall from the uh, from your from the test one, okay, there are questions that related to uh, standard deviation. Okay, what is the definition of standard deviation? Okay, it's the square root of variance. Okay, so x minus mu divided by sigma is the standard formula to calculate the z value. Okay, so why do we need to calculate the z value? Because once we obtain the z value, then you can determine what is the associated probability value okay, for that uh, event x that you want to calculate. Okay, so you need to convert the value of x okay, into z value. Okay, um, as what? So if you refer to the to the ebook, okay, to the PDF file that you have, okay, at the end of the chapter on page six hundred. Okay, so you will have this table what we call areas under the normal curve. So and the table begins with this uh, z value here. So uh, if you want to calculate the probability of a normal distribution, a z uh, under this normal distribution, so it must be uh, calculated based on uh, the z value. Okay, so you need to convert from x okay uh, into z. Okay, so to convert x into z, you follow this simple formula x minus mu divided by sigma and once you obtain the z value then you can you are if, then you should uh, be able to refer to the z table okay to obtain the value the probability value so i will explain uh, to you all how to read the table and how to determine the probability value okay so this is how you actually learn manually okay, how to uh, calculate the value of the probability from the normal distribution table. Okay, so first, uh, the formula, okay, x minus mu divided by uh, sigma. So this is the one that I'm referring to from the ebook, uh, from the table just now. Okay, so the value of z, uh, let's say you get the z value equals to, uh, equals to 1.35. So how do you read 1.35? So 1.35 is basically 1.3, okay, Five. So this one, so 1.35 is referring to 0 0.4115. Okay, let's say the z value from the formula x minus mu divided by sigma, the z value that you obtain is 1.35. So 1.35 is referring to 
1.35 okay so 1.35 fall under 0.4115 value so that is the simple uh, way how to determine of course how to determine the probability is another uh, issue okay that's so you need to understand how to read the area under the curve so if you look at the uh, picture here okay you can see that this one it is noted as uh, the probability of zero to z meaning from the center it, uh, until the z value so and for example if z 1.96 okay so let's say 1.96 how do you read 1.96 1.9 okay 1.9 Okay, 1.96. Okay, so 1.96 is this one. So 0 0.475. Okay, that's why the book gives this example. 1.96 is equal to 0 0.475. Okay, 1.96, 0 0.475. So if 1.96 is equal to 0 0.475, so the area that you uh, highlighted or you shade the area under the curve is basically between 0 to 1.96 that is equal to 0 0.475 not including the area on the left side of the curve if you recall the characteristics of a uh, normal distribution just now okay it is symmetrical meaning that the area on the left uh, is equal to 0 0.5 the area on the right is also equal to 0 0.5 so what you see here okay the table only gives you the value on the right side of the curve Okay, it does not gives you the value on the left side of the curve because it is symmetrical. So if you want to know the value on the left, it is just the mirror image of the value on the right. Okay, or if you want to calculate both area on the left and also on the right. So once you find the value on the right, you can just multiply by two. That is the idea of symmetrical when you refer to the table. So uh, to simplify reading the table, the table only gives you the value on the right side of the table, which is the total will always be equal to 0 0.5 okay how do we know this if you look at the 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 bottom value of the table let's say we go to the most extreme z value the biggest one is 3.0 3.0 is the biggest one and the highest value is 3 is 0 0.09 meaning that this should be 3.09 3.09 is the anything more than 3.09 the value will remain the same 0 0.4999 which is almost equal to 0 0.5. So if you calculate the Z value, if the Z value, uh, let's say you get 4.2, 4.2 is obviously more than 3.09. So the value will also be equal to 0 0.5. Okay. So anything more than 3.09, it will take the same value as 3.09. Okay. So the total, so what, what this means is that any, if the value of Z is bigger than 3.09, the total area on the right will be equal to 0 0.5. Okay, so uh, again, of course, you will, you will understand this better when we start doing some of the uh, exercises or examples, okay, from the book. Okay, but just to let you know, okay, the book only gives you the area on the right side of the curve. Okay, and why? Because it makes it just to simplify how to how to read the table. If you are looking the area on the left. It is the same on the area on the right okay, because it is symmetrical. So, and then then you can actually uh, you know calculate the value of the uh, relevant probability value. Okay, so this slide is just teaching you how to calculate the z value. Okay, we are not looking at how to read the z table yet. Just a simple example: how to convert from x into z value. Okay, so I mentioned just now. Uh, when we call z distribution is basically you need to convert the x into z you to convert it by using this formula x minus mu divided by sigma okay so uh, okay this one okay so uh, the, if x is 1100 okay and also if x is 900 what is the the associated z value when x is 1100 given that the mean is 1000 and the sigma is 100 so just plug in the value you get uh, z equals to 1.0 and negative 1.0 okay take note that when you calculate z value this is not the value of probability that's why you will get a negative value 
Okay. So when you look at the Z table here, okay. So uh, let me go back to this. Okay. Um, okay. In this slide, okay, we we refer to this uh, point that the mean will be zero and the sigma equals to one. So the mean is the value in the middle of the distribution, correct? Okay, the mean uh, will be in the middle value. Uh, so when you when you draw the normal distribution uh, curve, the bell shaped distribution, okay, the mean of the, the mean will be the value in the middle. So a normal distribution will have a mean equals to zero. So that's why when you uh, refer to the table, okay, this zero value is basically referring to the mean value. The mean is equal to zero. So because it's a, it is a symmetrical distribution, so the value on the right will be positive. Okay, to the right of zero will be negative, and the value to the left of zero will be negative, because this is not uh, because the positive and negative is referring to the z value. It is not the probability value. So you can get the value of z from positive 0 0.1 until positive uh, infinity if you want to. Okay, but usually the value uh, will be between 0 to 3 something. Okay, because uh, as what we mentioned just now, anything more than 3.09, the value will be the same. Okay, so you can get the value of 0 until 3 something positive, or you can also get the value of 0 from negative 0 0.1 until negative 3 point something because basically it's just the mirror image of the value on the right. Okay, so when you calculate the Z value, you can get negative, okay, because this is not the probability value that are yet. So you need to refer to the table, then you can obtain what is the probability value associated with Z equals to 1 and Z equals to negative 1, okay, or whatever Z value that, that you get from the example okay so here you can see when x is 900 the z is negative one okay so uh, we i will not discuss any further because this slide is just to teach you how to uh, convert from z uh, from x into z okay using this simple formula so the information that you get from this talk from this beginning of the uh, this uh, the from i mean in this slide is just uh, the mean value and the sigma. Okay, so when x equals to uh, 1,100, 1, we get z equals to 1. So how do you denote this? How, to, how do you show this in your normal distribution uh, diagram? So it will be, uh, so when, whenever you draw a normal distribution diagram, okay, or a normal distribution curve, okay, so Usually, you just need to draw these two lines, the line in the, the x-axis and also the diagram, I mean, the, the, the bell shape distribution. And then, usually, you will draw the middle line to indicate the mean, the starting point, which is zero. Okay, so this is the typical uh, way whenever you want to draw a normal distribution, draw the horizontal line and also the bell shape distribution and then mark the center with uh, zero value. So when you get the value of z equals to one, okay. So one is somewhere here, okay. So this is one. So the area that you will be reading from the table is between zero to one, okay. Recall that from the from the ebook just now, okay. The value the book only gives you or the table only gives you the value between the center value zero until the relevant z value that you get that you want to calculate. Okay, so if z that you calculate is 1.0, so the area under the curve that is uh, that you will be reading from the table is the highlighted area, meaning between 0 to 1.0. Okay, so and then once you obtain the area under the curve, okay, then you can find what is the probability. So what is the likelihood? Okay, so another word of probability you can also call likelihood. Okay, what is the probability of selecting a foreman whose income is between 1,000 and 1,100? So if this is your question, so what is the kebarangkalian? What is the probability? Okay, when you, so let's say if you have a distribution, let's say you want to know uh, about relation uh, income level. 
okay and let's say we want to focus on the citizens of Kedah okay so let's say from the, from a sample of or from the population of the Kedah uh, citizen okay and uh, when you uh, so what is the probability of selecting okay one let's say one one uh, one person okay uh, from the from the let's say from 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 a shop okay, or from a mall where the income will be uh, between 1000 to 1100 okay, just to give you an idea okay how to actually apply this in your day to day uh, life or in a research okay so uh, so first these two values are referring to the x value so you need to convert the x into z first so you want to calculate the probability between uh, 1000 to 1100 so the first thing is to convert the x into z so 1000 you get x equal z equal to 0 okay uh, whereby okay so the mean remains the same 1000 and the sigma is 100 okay so for x 1000 the z will be 0, 0.0 okay whereby when x is 1100 the uh, z will be 1.0 okay so once you obtain the z value for two uh, for each of the x value okay then you locate the value in your normal diagram okay your normal curve okay so uh, obviously okay the one on the top here is not what we are referring to this one okay this this is the raw value meaning the x value what you want is the converted value whenever you draw the normal diagram okay the value that you want to plot is basically the z value not the x value but the slide okay in this book it just want to show you okay uh, this is the x value okay 0 and 1.0 both of these are the z value so whenever you draw a normal diagram okay the value that you want to plot okay on the normal diagram is usually referring to the z value okay because then you can read from the table directly okay? because if you put the x value okay the table only gives you the z value read so it makes more sense to put to convert x into z okay and and uh, what you see on the bottom slide here so uh, when z when x is equal to 1000 you get the z equal to 0 okay and uh, 1100 the z is 1.0 here okay so the bell so because the question asks you what is the probability between uh, between 1000 and 1100 so the area under the curve will be the one in the middle here. So how do you put this in question? Or I mean, how do you put this in term of equation? So it will be something like P, what is the probability of X between, okay, between 1,100, okay, and also 1,000. So I think this is, uh, I mean, I'm not going to teach you mathematics, okay, of this equality sign. But whenever you you uh, post with the question uh, between two values, so the 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 sign will be uh, okay will be the lower value and also the upper value. So if x is between one thousand and one thousand one hundred, so it will be the probability of one thousand less than x less than one thousand one hundred, meaning that x is less than one thousand one hundred but more than one thousand. Okay, so this is how you write in term of uh, x value then when you convert into z it will be the probability of uh, zero less than z less than one okay because this is what you get okay when 1000 it will be zero x now we convert into z okay the 1100 now becomes one so what is the probability of z between zero to one Okay, then if you follow it, the, then once you obtain or you convert from Z into X, then you know how to, uh, it will uh, facilitate uh, you to read the Z table. Okay, so the, the first step is always to convert X into Z. Okay, of course, the, the, the best or the ideal way is to write in terms of the equation here, okay, in terms of the uh, persamaan. Okay, so the probability of X between the two values, okay, 1000 to 1100, then you convert into z using the simple formula x minus mu divided by sigma. So the relevant 
x value you just put down here okay so uh, then it becomes the probability of z between 0 to 1 okay so once you are clear on uh, how to convert x into z okay so please refer to so usually when you whenever you draw a normal diagram refer to the one on the bottom here meaning plot according to the z value you don't need to have this one it just the z value will be sufficient meaning plot zero and one will be enough okay? you don't need to put 1000 and 1100 on the bottom of the value here okay but i mean of course if that makes you understand better okay uh, you can also do that okay but in terms of uh, reading the table what is needed is the z value okay the associated z value there once you convert from x into z okay so we know that uh, zero will be zero okay but one okay because the value is between zero to one point zero so uh, zero is zero lah. so you cannot calculate so that there is uh, the value of the z table equal to zero will be zero okay but one point zero gives you so one point zero is zero point three four one three okay so if you refer to the uh, this table as well okay 1.0 will be this value okay 0 0.3413 okay so 0 0.3413 is the value uh, of 1.0 okay meaning so whenever you read this value okay 0 0.3413 because the z value i mean the z table gives you the value so this value 0 0.3413 is from 1.0 until 0 because the table only gives you uh, the value 0 to z okay so 0 to z so if 1.0 means from 0 to 1.0 if 1.4 means from 0 to 1.4 so it is always the area from 0 to something okay from some 0 to something means from 0 to what is the z value that you want to calculate so if 1.0 means 3.0.3413 okay so in the so in the area that you want to calculate here so this value will be okay so this shaded area is what okay it will be 0 0.3413 okay because in this example okay it happens to be that your x value when you convert into z become zero so uh, so it just make just to make uh, this example simple so 100 1100 you get 1.0 so the probability of x between 1000 to 1100 is actually the answer will be 0 0.3413 sorry 0 0.3413 okay 0 0.3413 meaning that the area between 1.0 until 0 okay so this is how you uh, read the z table okay, let's look at another uh, example okay this one okay what is uh so the, the same example okay whereby the mean is 1000 the sigma is 100 so it's basically using the same uh, information from the previous two slides okay but now what is the probability of uh, selecting this person uh where the income is between 790 and 1000 okay so the first step is of course to convert x into z so 790 the z value will be negative 2.1 again okay this value is not the probability value yet so you can get negative because the area on the left of the z table will be uh, a negative value okay? uh, 0 0.1 negative 0 0.1 until negative infinity but usually the value will not be more than 3 or 4 negative 3 or 4 okay because even the table gives you the highest will be 3.09 okay so you get negative 2.1 and the other z will be 0, 0.0 meaning that uh, so you want to calculate the probability between 790 to 100 uh, to 1000 so when you convert into z okay so i'm just going to write in term of z directly okay so in term of z okay so uh, 790 we get negative 2.1 okay negative 2.1 uh, 1000 you get zero okay so now you want to calculate the probability of z between negative 2.1 until 0. So 0, we, we know directly it will be in the middle of the distribution. So there is no value associated with 0. So 
when you want to calculate the probability of between negative 2.1 to 0, okay, so again, when you, whenever you start drawing a normal diagram, start with the one in the middle, okay, and then find uh, where is negative 2.1, okay, because we know that the, the highest value on the right side of the tail or the left side of the tail will be around 3 or 4, okay, negative 3, negative 4, so 2.1 or negative 2.1 will be somewhere here, right? it will be somewhere in the, at the end of the tail, so this will be negative 2.1. Okay, so negative 2.1 until 0. So, of course, we know that 0 is in the middle. So, the area that we want to calculate is here. Okay, the area under the curve. That's what you see in the slide here. Okay, but wait. Okay, you know that the table only gives you positive value. Okay, so when you read on the, when you look at the table, all the values of Z only assume positive values. Okay, but because the table is symmetrical, so we can just assume if you want to calculate the value of uh, negative z 2.1, okay, the mirror image will be the value is 2.1 on the right side. Okay, so if you were to reverse this image, okay, so whenever you draw uh, this normal diagram, okay, so the area under the curve that that you want to uh, that you want to calculate is the area uh, is this area. Okay, but by the same definition, this area on the left, okay, between negative 2.1, uh, 2.1, okay, until 0, okay, will be the same size of the uh, area under the curve if you were to flip negative 2.1 becomes 2.1 positive, okay, because it is symmetrical, so the area on the, on, on this red area will be the same as the green area here, so, if you want to read the table, you can read 2.1 until 0, which is what you can get directly from the table because the table, whatever value from the table is always 1.5 until 0, 2.1 until 0, 2.7 something until 0. Okay, so because it always stops in the middle of the diagram. So our Z value of uh, 790 just now, we get negative 2.1. So when we flip to the right, it becomes positive 2.1. So go to 2.1 in the table here. So the value is 2.10. So 2.10 will be this value, 0 0.4821. Okay, 2.10 means 0 0.4821. So 0 0.4821, this value is the value between 0 to 0 uh, to 2.1, which is coincidentally, uh, okay, because this, this, this example just to make your life easier, uh, the other z value is happened to be zero. So the area on the so when you flip the area on the right side just now, it is equal to the area on the left, which is zero point four eight two one. Okay. So the answer to this question, what is the probability between seven ninety to one thousand? Okay. So the answer to this will be zero point four eight two one, which basically the 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 direct answer that you get from the from the table. Okay, so take note that both of these example on this page on this slide and the previous slide, you can use directly the table because the other value happen to be zero. Okay, so if you recall from the previous uh, example just now, okay, this one, what is the probability between one thousand to one thousand one hundred? So when you convert into z, the other uh, so one of the z value happen to be zero as well. So means that the when you read the table, you only read the value of 1.0 because zero is zero. Okay, and also the same thing here. The other z value also happened to be zero. So it uh, when you read the table, it's just a direct uh, reading. That direct uh, read, you can just refer directly to the table okay, because the other z value happened to be zero. So if that is the case, if uh, if you do any exercise or question from the test, then uh, it is a very simple, straightforward question. But what if the two z value, uh, both of them, uh, okay, uh, okay, let, let me, okay, never mind. Let, let's go to this uh, slide first. Okay, so okay, in this example, you are just given one uh, x value. Okay, what is the probability of uh, whose income is less than 790? Okay, less than 790. So first, 
write this down in terms of equation. So P x less than 790. Okay, so this is how you write in terms of the equation. Okay, or the uh, in terms of the persamaan. Okay, P x less than 790. So of course, the next step will be to convert this into Z. Okay, so you want to know what is this P in term of Z value. So Z will be less than what? So of course, when you convert X into Z, okay, perform this calculation outside. So you, you get the Z value, which is uh, negative 2.1. Okay, so we know that uh, because 790 is also the same example as the previous slide. So when X is 790, Z will be negative 2.1. Okay, so how do you know this? Okay, you can refer to the to this calculation here, which is the same as before. Okay, so when x is 790, z becomes negative 2.1. So the value that you want to calculate is p z less than negative 2.1. Okay, so there are two things here that you need to focus. First is the equality sign less than. Second is the z value. So whenever you draw, so the, the first thing that you need to do before you even read the table to determine what is the correct, what or what is the probability value that is equal to Pz less than 2.1, okay, or less than negative 2.1, you need to look at first the equality sign, whether it is more than or less than, okay. Take note that in a normal distribution or continuous probability distribution, if you compare with discrete, Okay, binomial and binomial and Poisson. Okay, if you recall from our discussion last week, okay, uh, under binomial or discrete, you will have questions more than or at least greater than, or you can also have less than or less and equal to. Okay, if you recall from the calculator, online calculator that, that you use, okay, or even the, if you want to calculate manually, okay, under discrete distribution, you will have uh, more than or at least greater than or less or less or meaning that there can be four of these equality signs okay because these are different more than more than once means two and above okay so at least uh, greater than one means one and above okay meaning that one is included okay? more than one means one is not included it can be so you, you will start from two two or three four under discrete distribution the same thing here if less than two meaning that one and below uh, less or equals to two means two and below meaning two is included so under poison or this uh, binomial okay you will have this kind of uh, equality signs okay but it is not the same as continuous because under continuous okay uh, greater greater or uh, more than or more or equal to is referring to the same uh, i mean has no difference because it is continuous okay because it is continuous in nature so these two signs carries the same meaning the same thing as less or less or equal to okay these are the same thing as well okay under continuous distribution so that's why whenever you uh, refer to questions under probability under normal distribution or continuous distribution okay Whenever you write the equality sign, okay, for example, like this one, less than, okay, so less than means uh, the sign will be less than, lah, okay, but even if you write like this, okay, it will still be the same because uh, you cannot, uh, because whenever you deal with continuous, it does make no difference with whether you are using less than or less or equal to sign, okay, because the calculation or the answer will remain the same. So, of course, uh, as I mentioned, start by determining what is the Z value. So you convert Z, uh, X into Z, so you get this one to be negative 2.1. So you want to know what is the probability of Z less than 2.1. So as I mentioned, the first thing that, that you want to take note is the equality sign. I mean, the, the, the direction of the sign, whether it is less than or more than. Okay, and then next is the value of Z, whether Z is positive or z is negative in this case our z is negative okay so the next step will be once you observe the sign the equality direction so this is less than and our z is negative value so the third i mean the next step will be to, to draw your uh, normal diagram so of course whenever you draw a normal diagram you want to start with the value of zero 
okay meaning that uh, you draw the middle line and noted the, the, the center line equal to zero value okay next is to look at your z value the, the one that you converted from x into z which is negative 2.1 okay so 2.1 is here okay so there is no difference between the previous uh, slide okay so you know that 2.1 is here okay but now so now you have so first i mentioned observe the the, the direction less than or more than so this is less than and next is the value of your z whether it is positive or negative okay so this is negative value next step will be to draw your normal distribution uh, curve okay and start by plotting the center line equal to zero okay and then uh, determine or locate the value of your z which is negative 2.1 okay next the area under the curve okay before you can start shading in number lucas you want to highlight where is the area that you want to calculate so that one is determined by the direction of your equality sign so because this is less than so when you draw 2.1 okay the, the form the, the question asks you calculate the probability of income less than 790 okay 790 uh, first x less than 790 so convert into z now z become less than negative 2.1 so less than 2.1 means a negative 2.1 so this is the value less than 2.1 meaning the area to the left of 2.1 if i change the sign into more than then it will be the area to the right of 2.1 okay but uh okay so let me let me draw again okay so once you determine the area under the curve okay so you want the area to be to the left of 2.1 okay so this is the area that you are looking for okay so once you determine the uh so this is negative 2.1 because the sign is less than so you want this area so you want to determine what is the probability of calculating this area okay so what is the area under the curve okay so which is less than 2.1 so now whenever you want to read the table okay so be, first we know that the area uh, is symmetrical so if you want the area on the left side of the curve okay by definition it is also the same as the area on the right side of the table okay correct because if this is negative 2.1 the mirror image will be positive 2.1 so if this is less than 2.1 the opposite direction will be more than 2.1 okay so this is just the mirror image because it is symmetrical if you want the area less than 2.1 negative the, uh, the mirror image will be more than positive 2.1 so this is the area that you can read from the table because again the table only gives you the area on the right side or on the positive side the table does not give you the area on the negative side Okay, it only gives you the area from zero onwards okay from zero to the right side of the table okay so now the trick or now the the the, the skill needed is how to determine the value of positive 2.1 above more than so basically this value okay if i want to write this in terms of equation okay when you so in this question you want to calculate p uh, x less than 790 which is equal to p z less than negative 2.1 okay so when i draw this diagram here this uh, equality is also equal to p z more than positive 2.1 okay but you don't need to, to to write this one i'm just what you need is just this okay but i'm just showing you that this uh, this value will be the same as p z more than 2.1 because it just reverse the uh, because when you draw the normal diagram, this the, the value of this area will be equal to the value of this uh, area here. If you were to calculate this one, okay. So of course you don't need to write this thing down, okay. But I just want to you to know this will be equal to this, okay. So two point one more than two point one is what you want to calculate. But uh, how does the table gives you, or how how do you how do you read the table? So if you go back to the table here, okay, the table only gives you the area between zero, uh, zero to the value 
of the z value so it does not so meaning that it only start from zero to the z value that you calculate it does not give you the area to the right side of the table okay or in other words if you want let's say if you z if, if your z is let's say uh 1.5 Okay, 1.53 for example. Okay, 1.53 equals to 0 0.4370. So where is 0 0.4370 if you were to draw this thing? Okay, so 1.53 means okay, so 1.53 means 0 until 1.53. Okay, so if I were to shape this thing, okay, so 1.53 you get 0 0.4370. So so how do you shape this area? So it will be this area lah, between zero in zero to 1.53. So it stops until 1.53. Or in other words, okay, uh, if you want to write this thing mathematically, okay, it will be between uh, Pz, okay, uh, Pz between zero until 1.53, correct? Okay, so. I'm just writing this one down so that you can see how to read the table correctly. So once you get the idea or you get the hang of reading the table, then it will just be uh, you know uh, the same process regardless of what questions that you do. Okay, so 1.53 until zero, so you get 0 0.4370. So by the same token, okay, the same the, the example just now, once you to calculate px less than 790, which is Pz less than negative 2.1. Okay, so the area that you want to calculate is this small area. Okay, but I also show you that this small yellow area will be equal to the area on the right side of the table. So if you were to flip the area on the right, okay, so this becomes uh, positive 2.1, correct? Okay, as what I showed you. So, okay, so meaning that you can you uh, you want to calculate the area on the right side so when you read the table you are reading as though you are reading the the area on the right side okay? although you want to calculate the area on the left side here but when you read the table as though you are calculating the area on the right but because the table only gives you between zero to the z value so the table only gives you this area okay meaning the table only gives you between zero to 2.1 meaning only this green area okay it does not give you the remaining side of the table okay so it's just a matter of complement rule okay so we know that when you read z equals to 2.1 you get 0 0.481 correct okay so let, let let's go to the z table so 2.1 is 0 0.481 here okay so this is uh this is 2.10 so you get 0 0.4821 okay as the answer so 0 0.4821 is the area on the uh so if you would if i were to draw this green area so this will be 0 0.4821 okay 0 0.48 so if you were to read the table okay uh 2.1 because there is no negative from the z table so you need to read positive 2.1 so positive 2.1 is 0 0.4821 so that area will be this one, the area, the green shaded area. Okay. But what you want to calculate is not the green area. What you want to calculate is the remaining part here because when you convert the area from the left to the right, okay, this area is equal to this area. Okay. But what you get is this one. So if you want the remaining area, just minus by 0 0.5, which gives you 0 0.0179. So once so after you come so once you uh, if you get a question like this okay px uh px less than 790 so the first step is to convert into z so you get this value to be pz less than negative 2.1 okay so as i mentioned the first thing that you need to do is check the equality sign so this is less than and the, the z value is negative so the next step will be to draw your normal diagram okay so draw your normal diagram and determine what is the area under the curve that you want to find out that you want to calculate so uh, it will be uh, two point negative 2.1 is the z value and you want the area less than so this is the area that you want to calculate 
So once you are clear what is the area under the curve that you want to calculate, then you can start reading the table. So if it is a negative value, you can imagine, you can flip the area as though you are calculating the area on the right. So uh, you want the area on this side of the table, but the table only gives you the value on the left side, meaning between zero to the Z value. So meaning you refer to the table as 2.1 positive, you will get the green shaded area. So minus by 0 0.5, you will get the area that you are looking for. Okay. So once you start doing more exercise, okay, then you will get the hang of how to read the uh, Z table. Okay. So let's do another uh, one here. Okay. Um, Okay, maybe one last one last uh, slide for today okay, before we do some exercise from the book. Okay, so now you want to calculate uh, the same thing uh, between 480, uh, 840 to 1200. Okay, so of course, the first thing is to write down in terms of the equality. So Px is in between 840, okay, until uh, 1,200, okay? So this is what you want to find, okay? And then convert into Z, okay? I'm just copying and paste from this one. So uh, you know that when you calculate into Z, you get the Z value to be, or 840 is equal to negative 1.6, okay? Whereby uh, 1,200 is 2.0, okay? So now you know what is your Z value. Uh, one is negative, the other one is positive. So between negative 1.6 and positive 2.0. Okay, so once you update this, so when you have two values, okay, be, uh, between two values, so you need to know uh, whether the two values are both positive, both negative, or one negative, one positive. Okay, so because the way to read the table will be determined by the sign of your Z table, uh, of your Z value. So in this case, you get one negative, one positive. Okay, so the first thing is to draw your, uh, once you uh, converted from X into Z, is to convert, is to draw your normal diagram. Okay, of course, always start with zero in the middle, and then the Z value for the first one is negative 1.6. So it will be somewhere here. So this is 1.6, and then 2.0 will be on the positive side, okay, 2.0. So you want the area between these two signs, so the shaded area will be uh, this green, uh, this blue, plus the green. Okay. Why am I highlighting? I'm using two different colors, because uh, we want to separate, uh, because you, you have two Z values. One is between, uh, one is negative 1.6 and the other one is positive 2.0, okay? Because the area on, under the curve will always be equal to one, okay? And then you know that it is symmetrical. If you want to read the table uh, on the left, it is, if you want the value on the left, it is, uh, you can find it by converting the value into a right uh, side of the table. So, uh, so you need to have, you need to do two steps, okay? One is to calculate the negative side first and then determine the area on the positive side, the value of Z uh, positive 2.0, and, and then sum up, okay? Summing the two values, then you will be able to answer this question between 840 and 1200, okay? So how to calculate negative 1.6 uh, until zero? So the, 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 the one in the blue area, Okay, we need to solve first. So again, uh, the trick is to convert the area on the right side of the table. So we know that uh, it is a mirror image. So negative 1.6 until zero. So basically this is the area that you want to find. Okay. So this part will be equal to, uh, if you were to draw this shape, uh, this area in a separate table. So one negative 1.6 until zero will be the same as zero until 1.6 positive okay so this is 
the okay let me use this color okay so this will be the area that i okay that we are referring to the blue area so this is the blue area here okay the area uh, on the negative side negative 1.6 until 0 is basically the same as 0 until 1.6 positive okay so we know that the table gives you the value only on this part of the table meaning from 0 to the z value so when you read the table you will get directly the, the value on this green area and the same thing with positive 2.0 the table only gives you the value between uh, i mean from 0 to 2 so you read the table as 2.0 you get the value and then you get the value of 1.6 from the table you get the value as well and you sum up both of them okay so let's check the table okay we can see that from this example okay from the slide here okay so first just now is 1.6 okay 1.6 is the area on the negative side we flip uh, or we assume that okay it, uh, it is now it become positive so negative 1.6 is equal to positive 1.6 so 1.60 is 0 0.4452 the other one will be 2.0, which is 0 0.4772. So, uh, because it is located, so if I were to draw this thing again, okay, so, so one is negative 1.6 on this part, the other one is uh, positive 2.0. So, if, if we were to uh, highlight this area, so it will be the area, the green area, plus the, uh, the blue area here, okay. So the one on the green is referring to this one. 0 0.4452 is this part. 0 0.4772 is the blue part. Okay. So you add both, meaning 0 0.4452 plus 0 0.4772 will give you the answer to the question that uh, from this uh, slide here. Okay. What is the area between 840 to 1200 is the so the answer will be 0. Point what, 0. 0.8, uh, 0. 0.9 something. Lah, okay? The sum of 0. 0.4452 plus 0. 0.4772. So that will be the answer to this question. Okay. So uh, the rest of the slide is basically changing the value of x and z. Okay. So let me... Uh, it's 11, 13. Okay, let me sharing first. 